Hi guys, welcome to Programming in Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building a simple client server chat application. This application is going to have two Rust projects inside of it, so let's make a folder called chat. To do this in Windows, I just call make dr and then the uh, directory I want to name, so chat, and then we'll cd into chat. First we want to make our server. I'm going to call cargo new server with the bin flag. And here we have our project open up in VS Code. The first thing we want to do is bring in all the imports that we're going to need. We're going to need standard IO. We're going to need this error kind, which is an error message type. Then we're going to need the read and write trait. Then we want to bring in standard net TCP listener. This will allow us to create our server and listen on a port. Then we want to bring in our standard sync MPSC, which will allow us to spawn a channel. Finally, we want to bring in standard thread so that we can work with multiple threads. Next, we want to create two constants. The first one's called local, and it will have our local host with a port in it. It. So in this case, we have local host with 6,000. And then we create another constant called message size. And this will be the buffer size of our messages. We want our messages to be at most 32 bit in size. You could go crazy with this. You could make it fairly long, but in this case, I just want to keep it fairly short. We can instantiate our server here by saying let server equal TCP listener bind. Then we call that on our local string here. So we want to bind it to this IP and port. And then if it fails to bind, then we're going to return this message inside of a panic. Then we want to push our server into what is called non-blocking mode. And if this fails, then we're going to print out this string inside of a panic. Now non-blocking mode basically lets our server constantly check for messages and so on and so forth. We want to create a mutable vector called clients that will allow us to put all of our clients in here. This will allow us to have multiple clients connecting to the server at once rather than just one or two. Then we want to instantiate our channel here and then we want to assign it to a string type. We're just telling the channel here that we're going to be sending a bunch of strings through it. Now we're going to use a little if let binding to destruct our result from server.accept. Now server.accept is what allows us to accept connect connections to this server. If we get an OK, then of course it's actually worked out. The socket here will be the actual TCP stream that's connecting, and then the address here will be the actual socket address. We can print out client connected with the address interpolated inside of it. Then we want to clone our TX, so our transmitter. We want to take our socket, try to clone it, and then push it into our client's vector. If this comes back and fails, then we're going to just uh, panic and say failed to clone the client. And the reason we're cloning our socket here is so that we can push it into our thread. Then we actually want to spawn our thread here with a move closure inside of it and the first thing we do inside this move closure is then create another loop. We want to create a mutable buffer which will be a vector with zeros inside of it with the message size. All right so then we want to match on socket.readExact and this will read our message into our buffer. So then we're going to assign msg to our buffer .into iter. So we're going to take the message that we're receiving, we're going to convert it into an iterator, and then we're going to take all of the characters that are not white space and then collect them inside of our vector here. Then we want to convert that slice of strings into an actual string. So we're going to use this string from UTF-8. We're going to pass in message here. And then if that comes back with an error, then we're going to say invalid UTF-8 message. And we're going to assign that to message. And then we just want to print out that the address sent the message. So it'll be address, then colon, space, and then the message with a debug flag. And we're going to send our message through our transmitter to our receiver. And if this fails, then we're going to panic and send back failed to send message to Rx. We're going to check the actual error inside of our error. And if our error kind, so the type of error, is equal to an error that would block our non-blocking here, then we just want to send back a unit type. So we just want to continue. Otherwise, we want to check for another error. And if we get an error, we don't care about what's inside of it. Then we just want to say closing connection with our client. And then we just want to break out of this loop here. All right, so we could leave the code as it is, but the problem is, is that our thread would be constantly looping around and it would be really awkward. We want to create something that will allow our loop to sort of rest while it's not receiving messages. So we're going to create a function here called sleep that will allow our thread here to sleep for a moment. And then we'll just call thread sleep 
And then we'll pass in standard time duration from milliseconds and 100. We'll just let our thread sleep for 100 milliseconds between each of the loops. And then we just call the sleep function right here. So we wanna do another if let now uh, below all of our other stuff. So this will be basically what will happen when our server receives a message and then we try to receive it through the channel. All right, so basically we want to collect all of the messages that we get through our channel. We're going to say clients, which we define as mutable up here, right here. So our mutable vector here. We're going to set that equal to an iterator of our clients. And then we're going to filter through our clients. And then we're going to say, okay, set the buffer equal to message.clone into bytes. So we're going to convert our messages into bytes. And then we're going to resize that buffer based on our message size. And then we're going to take our client and we're going to write all of the entire buffer. And we're going to map it into our client and send it back. And then we're going to collect it all into a vector. I know this seems a little bit convoluted to look at, but it's a bit of functional programming. Finally, after this if let okay, binding we just want to call sleep again and this is all the code that we need for our server so now let's create our client so we want to cd out of our server folder and then we want to create a new project called client and this will also be a binary so we're going to pass the binary flag here so cargo new client bin so then we want to open that project inside of our text editor all right so first we want to import the standard library io we're importing self because we want to import the IO library itself. And then we are going to import error kind, read and write. Then we're going to import standard library net TCP stream. Then we're going to import standard library sync, MPSC, self for the MPSC library, and then the try receive error type. And then we're going to import standard library thread and then standard library time duration. Again, we wanna make our constants here. We wanna make a local constant for our local IP and our local port. And then we wanna make a message size constant for our byte size of our messages. We want to create a mutable client, which is a TCP stream. And then we're going to connect it to our local here. So the IP with the port here. And then if it doesn't work, then we're going to panic and say stream failed to connect. And then we want our client to be non-blocking. So we're going to set the flag non-blocking to true. If it fails, then we're going to panic on this string here. Next, we want to instantiate our channel here. So we're going to be passing strings through it again. So we want to add that to the end of it. And then we're going to uh, assign it to TX and RX for its transmitter and receiver. Then we want to spawn our thread and we want to create a move closure inside of it with a loop. And immediately we're going to create a mutable buffer here with a vector with zeros inside of it that is of size, message size. And then we want to match on client.readExact and we want to read our message through the buffer. If we get back an OK, we want to say let message equal our buffer, turn it into an iterator, and then we're going to check to see if the references inside of it are equal to zero. And then we're going to collect all of them inside of our vector. So all the ones that are equal to zero, we're going to just discard. Then we just want to print out that we received this message. The uh, server will send back whether or not it got a receive V. And if it did, it'll just uh, tell us and then we'll send back the message. Again, we want to check to see if the error kind is a type that would block. So we're going to say error ref error. And then we're going to check if error kind is a error kind would block. And then we're just going to send back a unit type if it is. And then if we get another type of error, then we're just going to break out of our loop. And before that, we're going to print that our connection was severed. And we'll just say connection with server was severed. Then we want to match on rx.tryRecevV. So we want to see if the server sends back a message that says that it got the message that we're sending from the client. And if we do get back that message as an OK, then we want to clone that message into bytes and put it inside of a buff variable like this. And then we want to resize our buffer by our message size. And then we want to write all of our buffers into our client. And if they fail, then we're going to say writing to the socket failed. Otherwise, we're going to just print out that we sent the message. And then we're going to print out the message itself. So then we want to check to see if our try receive error is empty. And if it is, then we're just going to send back a unit type. Then we want to check if it's a disconnected type. 
in which case we just want to break the loop here. Then like we did before, we want to have our thread sleep for 100 milliseconds. And then outside of our thread and everything, we want to come down here and we want to create a print statement. So this is the print statement that will show up when the user opens the client. And we just want it to say, write a message. Then we want to create a new mutable string. And then we want to read into that string from our standard input. So essentially when the user types in something from the console, we want to read that into our string here so that it will be of type string. And we're doing all of this in a loop so that they can type multiple messages back to back to back. Then we want to take our buffer and trim it and then use the two string method to put it into a message variable here so that we can then check on the message. And then we'll say if message is equivalent to colon quit or if tx.send message comes back with an error, then we'll break out of our loop here and then we'll just print out bye bye. And that is actually the completion of our client. When we want to run this project, we need to open up two terminals, one for our server and the other for our client. All right, so now I have two terminals here, one for our client and one for our server. First, we want to run our server here. So we just call cargo run and this will just compile and it should just say running target debug server.exe. And then for our client, we just want to say cargo run and this should just come back and say write a message. So now we can type in a message here so we can say hello and you'll see here that we get message sent hello and then we get message received as bytes here. So you can see this is hello in bytes and then you can see here that this is the actual client and the client just sent hello. And we can keep typing here. We can go tensor. You'll see here that pops up here in our server and we get tensor and then we get it back as bytes as well. And we can write larger messages. Like for instance, the weather is nice today. It comes back and says the weather is nice today. So this was 27 bytes long. If we try to go much longer, you'll see what happens here in a moment. So if I try to send a message that's longer than 32 bytes, you'll see here that we get back exactly 32 bytes. So it doesn't actually break anything. It just cuts off the message at 32 bytes. So for instance, I typed in the dog ate the food in the rain and I had a period on the end of this. It cut off the period. And then I typed in the dog ate the food in the rain while barking and laughing. And then it cut off the while barking and laughing part. Now I'm going to zoom out of these clients real quickly so that you can see that a little bit better. And you'll see here that if we type in colon quit, then it will automatically quit out of the client here and the server will say closing connection with, and then it'll give us the client name. And then again, if I open another client here, then we'll get connecting to client. So client and the client name connected. So we could open up multiple other terminals and connect to our client as well. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. All of the source code will be on GitHub. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in the comment box below. And if you dislike the content, then download it as much as you'd like. Have a good day, guys.